This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about chemical kinetics. Today we will talk about the reaction rates and the rate law. First I will present the outline of this chapter where we are going to talk about different topics. Please refer to the corresponding video of the topic of interest. Sometimes the selection of a chemical reaction for a particular application relates to how fast this reaction can occur. For example, the production of 20 million tons a year for ammonia needed for fertilizers, we cannot simply mix nitrogen and hydrogen at 25 degrees and wait for the reaction to happen. This reaction needs to be fast enough to satisfy the needs of the market. The area of chemistry that concerns the reaction rate is called chemical kinetics. Consider the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide into nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. Nitrogen dioxide will react to give nitrogen monoxide and oxygen and therefore with time the concentration of nitrogen dioxide will decrease and the concentrations of nitrogen monoxide and oxygen will increase. The reaction rate could be determined from the change on the concentration of the reactant or the change of the concentration of a product per unit of time and therefore rate here for example is equal to delta concentration of A divided by delta T where A it could be a product or it could be a reactant. Note that the change on the concentration could be negative or positive. However, the reaction rate has to be always a positive quantity. Since the concentration of reactants always decreases, the rate expression involving a reactant will include a negative sign to get a positive quantity. The value of the reaction rate at certain time is called instantaneous rate. To calculate the instantaneous rate, we can simply calculate the slope of a tangent line to the corresponding time. And therefore, the slope of this line will be equal to the reaction rate. The coefficients in a balanced chemical reaction determine the relative rates of consumption of reactants and generation of products. For the following reaction, we can see that the rate of consumption of nitrogen dioxide is equal to the rate of production of nitrogen monoxide and equal to twice the rate of production of oxygen. All reactions are reversible and therefore products will accumulate with time and the reverse rate will become important. Therefore, the change on the concentration of the reactant will depend on the forward and the reverse rate of the reaction. If we choose conditions where the reverse reaction it can be neglected, the rate expression will depend only on the concentration of the reactants, and therefore the rate law will be governed by the following expression, where the rate is equal to K multiplied by the concentration of the reactant to the power of N, where K is called the rate constant, N is the rate order, and this is called the differential rate law. Note that n could be zero, an integer, or a fraction. The rate can be determined in terms of a reactant or a product as was mentioned previously. So as you can see in here, the rate of NO2 can be calculated from the change on the concentration of NO2, the rate of appearance of NO, could be determined from the change on the concentration of NO and the rate of appearance of oxygen can be calculated from the change on the concentration of oxygen. Since for two nitrogen dioxide molecules consumed, we generate one oxygen molecule and two nitrogen monoxide molecules, therefore the rate constant K is equal to the rate constant K prime which is equal to twice the rate constant K double prime. I hope this video was helpful to you. So please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.